Hey guys, Professor Bill of Comic Book University and Justice League, issue number one. Okay, um, I'm going to say right off the, the worst thing about this comic book is the art. That's not to say that it's terrible, because it's not, but it's not art I'd expect from Chung. If you saw my, my This Week in Comics, uh, the earliest I've ever put up, I put it up at like, what, 3.30, 4 o'clock in the afternoon on a Tuesday? That's pretty good. <laughs> but, yeah, for all intents and purposes, I talked about how I don't buy comic books because of names. I know the names. I know Jim Tung usually writes great stories, or excuse me, uh, draws great stories, you know? But I looked at this one, I'm like, I'm not going on the fact that he always used to do that. In this issue, he probably didn't. Now, my presumption for why a lot, not all of it. There are some great scenes in here. Case in point, look at the Hall of Justice. I'm sorry, is that ugly? No, not even a little tiny bit. That's gorgeous. It's beautiful. You look at some of the, oh, and down here, like this thing, the, the Door of Cologne, it's called. Really great ideas in here. Fantastic ideas. This word that kind of means justice. If you, uh, the, 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 the Martian version of justice, the closest word they have to that earth word. Uh, interesting, interesting. And a lot of this art, isn't bad. A lot of this art isn't bad at all. It's good, you know, for all intents and purposes, but there are going to be some scenes that, um, that aren't great. Here, here's another great art scene. Most of the art in here would have to, I'd have to say, uh, be really good. You know, say, oh, look at this. Did I, did I, did you see the dragon? That's actually, look at it. That's actually John Johns. It's actually Martian Manhunter. Ah, oh, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. And Batman has bombs all over the, um, the, all over the moon. What? <laughs> he tries to deny it at first. He's like, Batman. He's like, I'm fine. And everybody's trying to do Batman's voice. Not everybody, but enough people. Wonder Woman tried to do Batman's voice. Awesome. Awesome. You expect Barry to do it. He does. But mm. <laughs> it was fun. Um, so the art in here, like I have to just go on the art. I'm going to say that there are, here, look. There are scenes like this, which just, sorry, that's not great. And I wonder if, and I'm going to show you something way better, my favorite art in this in a moment. Uh, I know that the, um, uh, the DC Comics have been delayed a lot. It's like they don't have enough people doing the work that they're demanding. It's like well, they got this huge boatload of work. They're like, we got to get all this stuff out. And you got uh, 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 Countdown, the Infinity Countdown, Infinity Clock is, uh, is delayed, like massively delayed. They, all their events seem to be delayed. So I think that one of the ways that they're doing this, that, that they're trying to rush this stuff out, is that they're they're telling the artists, hey man, I need you to just, you know, focus on what you're going to draw well, and then the rest, just draw it fast. That could be a possibility, because you look here. Sorry, have you seen a better drawn Minerva and, uh, and Mantis? Because those look great. Joker looks okay. Awesome looking uh, Grodd. Uh, what's going on with Sinestro? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But like these two, oh my God, that's gorgeous. I'll, I'll, I'll look at that art all day long. That's gorgeous. So it's, it's like, that's the, the thing that really bugged me about the comic book, but, uh, like initially, but reading into it more, the story had too much in it. There were things that, thank God, they were reiterated because I got to go back and actually find what they were talking about. Like, you know, oh, Wonder Woman, I wouldn't have found the Onyx if it wasn't for you. Wait, what? What? There's Onyx flipping back? What the frig? What's going on here? Like, there's way too much happening inside of this comic book. It's an issue one. I get it. Maybe it should have been a double-sized issue so that they could have spread out what was happening a little bit more. But everything happened through exposition as opposed to seeing what was going on. There was a lot of jumping back and forth. And while oftentimes that can make it very dramatic. And this, for me at least, it just didn't seem to work very well. There was too much going on. And then only getting half-spoken thoughts. And then jumping to the next scene. And then half-spoken thoughts, jumping back and continuing. I'm like, okay, I, I feel like I need to, you know, post it, these pages, and just read them in color-coded order. You know what I'm saying? Let's read the Justice League story first, then let's read the, the Injustice Gang bringing into Legion of Doom thing. Uh, let's see what's going on here. 
Lex Luthor going what seems to be bad. Maybe he's not necessarily bad, but he does... Spoiler in here. He does kill Vandal Savage. It doesn't seem like... It's a big deal. It's a big effing deal. Holy... You killed Vandal Savage. But the Vandal Savage moment wasn't a surprise because the Justice League are like, oh, this particular, you know, kind of thing, it, it kind of, you know, this kind of bad guy thing coming at us, it kind of makes me think of Vandal Savage. Pretty soon you see Vandal Savage talking to a bunch of his, you know, his cronies, like, oh, we're going to do this and this and this. And it's like, oh, wow, they were totally right. Like one shot. Didn't have to phone a friend, nothing. You know what I'm saying? No lifelines. Um, so that was interesting. That was interesting. And then Lex Luthor coming over, and that's where the surprise is. He kills Vandal Savage. Like, oh, okay, that I did not see coming. A lot of secrets are revealed. Like, Vandal Savage decides to reach out to Martian Manhunter. Martian Manhunter seems to be the focus of all of this, which is cool, because since we haven't seen him in forever, having him be the focus is kind of necessary. Like, hi, welcome back, dude. He's not getting his own comic. Hawkman's uh, welcomed back. He's getting his own comic. This guy's just kind of, hey, I'm a Martian, I'm green. If I want to be, I could be other colors too. So it's good that they are going to focus. It, I'm hoping that this this title, not just this comic, is going to focus on the Green Lantern, or not the Green Lantern, the other green guy, Martian Manhunter. Um, ooh, could you imagine with that ring? But um, doesn't need it. Yeah, I'm hoping that's where we're going to go with this. Because they're bringing back the Legion of Doom. They've actually got the whole... <laughs> bloop, 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 coming out of lava this time. So, um... This could be fun. This could be a fun comic book to read. But they need to slow it down. Alright? There were parts that were slow. But the parts that weren't were racing. And it was hard to understand. Maybe I'm just tired. You know what I'm saying? Maybe that's what it is. Maybe I'll go back and read this and just be like, oh, okay, cool. But there are a lot of things in here that you, I feel like you kind of do have to read it the second time. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, it depends on how much you love the Justice League and all that stuff. And me, I'm not invested in the Justice League. I like reading their comic books, but I haven't been reading them this entire time. No Justice is the first time I jumped on this in a while. But just to give you that, that sense of um, uh, finality here... If you love the Justice League, I get the feeling you're genuinely not, you know, not faking it, like actually going to love the story that's coming up. But for me, a lot of this seemed a lot of a very rushed and it didn't need to be that way. They could have let the story breathe. But uh, you, may, if you've been with me at any, any time, especially in the Trinity comic books, uh, that's a complaint that I had about a lot of DC is that they've just got so many stories to tell and they're not interested in taking their time and letting those stories breathe. They're just like, here's a story, bam! And it's like, wow, that was a good story, but it would have been better if they would have not thrown it in my face, you know, fastball style. You know what I'm saying? Like, let a story breathe. If you're going to tell a story in six issues, make sure it's a six issue story, not a 14 issue story. Or A lot of them feel more like eight to 10 issue stories where they just kind of cram into six issue arc because, hey, no, that's not what I want. I want you to let your stories breathe, DC. I don't usually give advice. You know what I'm saying? I'm an influencer, not a, uh, not a, not a, 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 I don't know, a critic. I guess I am critical. I have to be critical. You know what I'm saying? But I'm not a, a creator of comic books, all right? I'm a content creator. So while I rarely give advice, I got to this is the one thing I always say about DC. Stop. Breathe. Let the stories come out more fluidic. Stop cramming the stories in there because, look, I'm Italian, man. I've made sausage, you know, with my great-grandmother when I was a kid. It's a disgusting process. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But you got to stuff it in and, and it's like, this, this isn't making sausages, all right? It, it's not. So just let the stories breathe. Let me read the stories and actually be able to ingest what's there instead of taking notes. Because I don't want to take notes, man. I want to read a good comic book and I want to enjoy. So, like, here, here's another suggestion perhaps. Let the art work with the story. Let the, Marvel does it a lot. I know people want to come down to Marvel, but that's only because there are people like diversity in comics out there who are telling people, Marvel sucks! And people like his personality so much. They're like, yes, Marvel sucks. Marvel sucks, my master. Chill out, all right? Um, thinking on your own, 
Marvel does not suck. <laughs> nice try. All right. Nice try. But um, with the DC comics, uh, I feel that they could learn something from Marvel and that a lot of their stories, a lot, not all of them, believe me, not all of them, but a lot of the stories, there's a symbiosis be between the writer and the penciler. All right. And whatever else the penciler is doing, is he doing inks? Is he doing color? You know, he or she. But they, they seem to work together a lot better. Like, hey, I need you to draw such and such and such. And I really feel like the artists are writing back and talking, hey, when you said to do such and such, what if I were to do this instead? Because it seems to work better. The story, like this is a visual media. I'm not reading a novel. I've got my novels. I read my novels. I don't usually review my novels. I, re I review comic books, all right? And if you've got a visual medium out there, you know what I'm saying? It's 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 kind of like you could you could tell your story in a movie through just a narrator standing there and telling you what's going on, or you can get to the darn movie. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And there's a lot of narration, especially in this Justice League story. There's a lot of narration in here. And I don't want your narration. I want to read a comic book. So there's that. Anyway, that's really all I've got on the subject. It's still, it still looks like it's going to be an amazing story. There's a lot of really good stuff in here. I would definitely buy this comic book. There's no question about that whatsoever. But it could be better. I feel like it could be better. A lot better? That's up to them. But it's good enough that if they just make it a little bit better, it'll be a lot better in my mind. All right, I better go. Professor Bill, Comic Book University. Class dismissed.